Are you having a better day than uh, Daryl Morey? Yes or no? I'm having a better day than Philadelphia 76ers fans. Tanking uh, to the what's le- what's worse than a tank? A, a garbage disposal? My goodness. What I I was on my run before and I was I was thinking of the Sixers thing. And uh and shout out to Derek Bodner, who's been covering the Sixers for years. He he beat me to it. He he did a whole a list on Twitter of basically all the ways that the Sixers organization has screwed things up or had had just been embroiled in in not goodness uh over the last decade. And I was thinking through all the ways like Joel Embiid, if he actually sits down and thinks back to um, all of the players he's played with or players he could have played with and either hasn't or doesn't anymore or soon won't be playing with anymore. Like, I don't know how this guy doesn't turn around and shake his head and be like, man, I got to get the fuck out of here. And the thing and the thing that I was, was thinking about on my run, I'm like, wait a minute. Everybody wants to give him a pass for the Simmons trade because they got Harden out of it, who's an all NBA player and was still really good. And like Ben Simmons turned into a pumpkin. But then I was like, nobody, I feel like people don't bring up the fact anymore that they could have had Halliburton or one of the Kings guards for him. And I just went and confirmed it. Jake Fisher reported that, that Halliburton was on the table for Ben Simmons years ago, which is like, that's just another one added to the list. It's freaking wild how much that organization got drafted an MVP and literally hasn't done anything else right. So what's funny about that specific point about the what they could have had is it was looked at at the time when they landed Harden that like good job Daryl Morey for yeah. waiting waiting this thing out and which not, is fair by the way which in is the fair moment, I thought the same thing yeah and then that's why I'm I'm. I'm skeptical to fully bring that up as a like, oh, what you could have had because different like things happened that has now led to this moment. Um, but yeah, in, in as far as hindsight is concerned, if you'd at least be more comfortable saying to him, be like, here's Tyrese Halliburton as frustrating as he might be on defense. He plays basketball or intends to play basketball for our team this year. I know that there was a rumor, whether it was a confirmed report, who who knows, but like the Halliburton stuff was out there, the Darren Fox stuff yeah. was out there. Well, like the that Kings was that were, summer, you know. The Kings wanted Simmons, I think. Yeah. That that much was was confirmed. And even, you know, just to take it another step, you like every single thing that has happened with Harden, both on the court and off, was predictable to people who like us who just watch the NBA from afar. To say nothing of people who are actually cover the sport for a living. And if it was obvious to us and full-time NBA media people, shouldn't all of this have been obvious to the man who allegedly knows James Harden better than anyone in the NBA? Like, he doesn't get like whatever, like the, the good job, Daryl, that we were saying we, we gave him a year and a half ago or two years ago, whatever it was, for waiting it out. That's no more. He it's no more good job, Daryl, for that. Because nothing, because he, again, it's not like there's been a monkey wrench. What's, what is, what's been the monkey wrench? What's been the unexpected thing? James Harden not showing up big in the playoffs? No. James Harden wanting to eventually get paid? No. Like James Harden threatening to lollygag his way off a team? No. If he didn't get his, the way he wants. I mean, it's just uh, we, all of this we've seen coming. It's crazy. So I guess, the, I guess, not, again, it's not a defense of him, but. My only thought if I was in his shoes is like, well, he never did it to me, you know, like he had already left. He hadn't, I guess, officially left uh, Houston. You're talking about it from Harden's perspective. No, no, no. No, you're. Oh, I I understand. Like he had done it when he when things ended with him and the Rockets had Maury already left. And then it was like whoever was left over to to. Yeah, because. Yeah, but hold on. Because he was already in Philly and he wanted Harden to trade him. Harden to get traded to Philly from Houston. For, forget that. It's let's get at the specifics here. Clearly, because of what for anybody who may have missed the clip, Harden came out and said on a I guess his China tour, um, I will never play for Daryl Moore because Daryl Moore is a liar, which is his way of saying without saying they promised me a contract extension when I opted in last year, and then they didn't give me a new contract that they promised or the contract that they said that they would give me. That was I mean that, it's what everybody's reading between the lines. So. Like, again, 
for Maury can't sit there and be like, he never did this to me because Maury yeah. never tried to take his money. That's and more or more, he never maybe lied to him before. Like, uh, I, I, again, I just I'm wondering what the hell Daryl Morey thought he was going to happen when he convinced Harden to opt in and said, we'll take care of you down the line. It's not like Harden performed well below expectations this season. He didn't. He was didn't. He, I mean, I know he didn't make an all NBA team, but he was like when he was on the court, he was an all NBA caliber player. Had some good play. It was some really good playoff games. Like, I, I, I don't know. I know I'm the worst messenger here when it comes to like, let's talk about James Harden and evaluate James Harden. I think but you're, you're fair when it comes to James Harden. I like to bring up that every time I've been like, I'm ready, James Harden, for you to have a playoff moment and to show me what's up. And he has come up extremely small. I have had to two be, great games in the, in the and that's where I'm going years. with this. Like as much as I want to point to this most recent playoff failure as another notch on his failed playoff belt. He does have game one and game four to point to as like, we're not in game six or game seven or in position to win this series without me. No, so I can't have a five game series. If he hadn't done what he did in game one, especially since MB yeah. didn't play game one. So exactly. I go to, I can at least feel some sympathy toward him being frustrated in this spot as to why he feels, you know, disrespected and lied to by Maury. What's what's weird to me is this now approach because, like, Maury. You mean Harden's approach? Yeah, because well, that's a separate. Like, that's Sixers a separate thing. Why did he opt right? in? Well, he probably opted in. Be we're talking about this most recent. Off-season? The most recent this opt in, the one that happened a month or two ago, whatever it was. Instead of opting out and testing free agency, you're saying. Yeah, I think your own Weissman, who we were just talking about, and hopefully we get the chance to talk to on the on the regular pod soon, um, had a great tweet earlier this morning where he like he goes through Harden's decision making process and like yeah, it was an inconvenient position he was in at the beginning of the summer where he realized like the big payday wasn't out there once the Sixers said we're not giving you the long term deal that you want, but then like it he. He, sh- I think he had to know then that he wasn't going to be able to have his cake and eat it too. Although, and we'll go through like what happens from here, and then we'll move on to the the next twenty five on our list. I let's play this out because who's going to blink first? There's three parties here: there's the Clippers, there's Harden, there's Maury. Harden just put his he he dug his heels in the sand this morning. I'm not playing for Daryl Maury. Okay. I don't think he's blinking. Do you? I don't think he's blinking. I don't think he's blinking either. Okay. So then it's basically becomes, it basically becomes the Clippers versus Maury. The Clippers have a good team. Like they, at the very least are going to feel now, like, as I say this, in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, they have their own situation to, to deal with because, like, Kawhi Leonard's extension eligible. Paul George, if he's not already, he's going to be extension eligible. We haven't heard boo about any of those two guys because the Clippers don't want to pay them either. Is it possible we have a, another holdout situation across the country? I guess. But um, could that be the leverage that the Clippers, those specific, those two guys, if they're like, go get James Harden, that's the only way that they, this can be salvaged. Well, right? that's how Maury, that's how Maury wins. Is if the Clippers guys try to bully the Clippers into making the Harden, but again, that's but now we're talking about apples and oranges because the Clippers guys, they want what Harden wants. They want to get paid. Right. It's not just about we need James Harden to win. Like they have, I think they probably think they have enough to win. But but I'm going on the assumption that the Clippers as an organization feel comfortable going into the season with the roster they have, as they should. They have a pretty good roster. You know, I mean, it's not a roster built for the long term. They have obvious big questions coming up with Kawhi and and Paul George. But for right now, it's a good team. So maybe they blink if they start out, you know, 12 and 13 or something after 25 games. But and here's my main point. By that point, are you telling me that the Sixers are going to deal with Harden sitting on the sidelines for a month or a month and a half or two months and and trust that Embiid is going to be totally okay with the second best player not playing basketball games when there's a team out there that will I mean the Clippers have an offer on the table for for Harden obviously it's just not a one that the Clippers feel strongly about and then that brings me back to Maury who I wonder at this point 
Because if I'm saying all this, obviously he's thought about all this uh, 10 times over. I wonder if he's like, well, if I make the Harden trade for what the Clippers have to offer me right now, I'm losing my job anyway. There's yeah. not one each ship. So he beats that's another. Out. That's the only other part of this I wanted to ask you about. Does, is there any chance like Harden wins and Maury might be out of a job? There's no power. Stream. I thought about that this morning for the so first time. I thought that, about that. That's the only other direction I could see this going is if Embiid's frustrated by all this and then he sides with Harden and he goes to goes to ownership and says, get this guy, get this guy yeah. out of here or yeah. else this is going to be me in you know a I couple mean, months. I mean, it's definitely something that needs to be considered after Harden made his comments today. I, I, I don't know. I. Uh, If you let's let's both make a prediction, and then we'll get to the top tw- the, the second twenty five. What what's your prediction as to how this gets resolved? This and there's boring. a wild card here, and it I have to say it it probably involves the Knicks. I mean, I think if the Knicks- if the Clippers offer really is, I mean, what do you what do we, I don't know if it's been reported. I'm assuming it's like Norm Powell and what Robert Covington and a pick or something like See, whatever. Here's the problem with involving the Knicks or involved like you made the case with the Clippers. Like a lot of these teams have their rosters already. And what's like, uh, let me ask right? it this Cause way. It's, Cause it's not just involving the Knicks and I don't want to rehash the thing from the Josh Hart live stream. Right. Um, what I'm saying is like, it's, it's not just trading assets for James Harden. Cause he can leave in a year and he like has to be okay. Wherever he gets traded, be, like it's also if you want to keep him and extend him, which I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure what the Knicks do, but a lot of teams are going to have to decide to commit assets and the future to James Harden. I'm not sure not what that is not necessary. Just hear me out. Hearing you hear out. out. Maury has said we're either going to trade. He, what has he said? We're going to trade harder for one of two things, either. A star, a, a, a star at the level of Harden or close or whatever, like a, a star, like an unequivocal star or something we can turn into a star, mm-hmm. which is why ultimately if the Sixers probably, I would assume if the Sixers could get Terrence Mann and two future Clippers first round picks, Terrence Mann is not that level of star, but they know they could flip Mann and those Clippers picks into a star. It might be in the middle of the year. It might be next summer, but they know that they they will have one left card to play. They're not going to have that card to play with Norm Powell and, and Robert Covington. What if there was a team willing to give them something that they felt confident they could then flip into something better down the line? And is there a team out there who has a potentially intriguing asset? Maybe even asset blowing up a FIBA at the moment that the Sixers could oh. look at and be like, huh? What if we what if we made him uh, what if we featured him this year? He's not James Harden. He's not close to James Harden, but he could look a lot better next to Joel Embiid than he currently looks in his situation playing third fiddle. And then we flip him next summer for for more of a win now star or whatever. And if you're the Knicks, and again, I'm not saying they do this. I hope they don't do this. I'm not an RJ Barrett guy. You know me. I'm the, I'm more out on RJ Barrett than anyone. Um, I wouldn't do it. But like, if you're the Knicks, I just wonder if they'd be like, all right, could we win a championship this year? With Jalen Brunson, James Harden, and, and Julius Randle. And if we don't, and Harden walks next summer, okay. What do we lose? We lost R.J. Barrett's contract. It basically is a question of, like, if, if you're the Knicks, do you think R.J. Barrett is an asset? Well, I'll answer that first question. No, they can't win a championship with James Harden, Jalen Brunson. Why do you Julius hate Jalen Brunson? Why do I hate James Harden? Why do I just have a resume to throw at you? Like that, if James, that's, if James Harden's third best player on a team and only has to be third best player such. on a team, he wouldn't be featured as such. Uh, man, John, we just don't be the second best player on a team. He might, again, I, I will be fair to what happened I'm, in the playoffs, right? Like, I'm yeah, being, not I'm being contrary here. Just to be I also clear. realize I, you're playing out the scenario. I, yeah, the Knicks are I'm not having a little fun, they wouldn't. I don't think like their odds change that significantly if they trade for James Harden to to win for for them to potentially win. I would argue that if you replaced I on this now I'm being dead serious. I would argue straight faced if you replace RJ Barrett's offense with James Harden's offense your ceiling goes up. I'm not saying you're championship contender, 
or a legitimate like top two, top three championship contender, but your ceiling goes up. You, it really, it does. It absolutely does. Then there's the other side of the ball that I don't have to worry about. I would argue that the difference between those two players on defense is John. What was the Knicks' death lineup last year? What was the Knicks' death lineup last year? Or closing the Knicks' death lineup, closing lineup was the Brunson, line. quickly Hart, Randall, and 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 Mitch. Right. So RJ was off the floor in this scenario. Yeah. So now you but not fine. James Hart is not going to sit okay. for that. Okay. Of course he's not. Which he's on the floor and set it quickly. So how is that defense going to stand up? Okay, since the you're defense, not in that scenario, def- definitely the defense gets a little worse. But that's uh, man, that's that's the thing I'm keep going back to. We're now having the same conversation we had during the Josh Hart opted in live stream, where I have to bring up how bad that backcourt would be defensively. How every of the every one of these short guards that's elite on offense. Uh, would pick the Knicks apart at the end of games. But I mean, don't worry, they'll if they get past you, Julius Randle's waiting there to shut things down. Kid, I'm I'm already Josh Hart's going to be standing there like, what am I supposed to do? I would argue. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not just it's here's the problem. It, it always it always comes back to Julius Randle. It's not just dealing with Brunson and Harden's defense. It's Brunson, Harden, and Randle's defense. Um, it's that's three the minus defenders, and whatever right. you think of quickly, whether well, some, Randall, he's, Randall's a minus defender. He, but much like Randall's a lot like Harden on defense, in that both of those guys have shown the ability to be at the very least average NBA defenders when they're on their. You know, I do not want to put team. my title hopes in the hands of guys who I have to wonder if it, we're getting. Their very best, which is average defense. It was more of a theoretical, like, because the other thing that, and again, I don't think the Knicks want to go this route, but if, 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 if the Knicks wanted to get back in the cap space game, it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen next year because they got to, they, especially with the hard extension. And, um, but if they wanted to get in the cap space game, let's say, in two years, and I haven't thought that far out, you know, but just for argument's sake, if they wanted to get back in the cap space game two years from now, that's that's part of the argument for a move like this. I, to, in addition to the, I do think it does raise their championship equity, maybe even just one two percent, but that's something. The reason, the biggest reason they're not going to do this is the most obvious one, because if the whole point is, if the whole if the whole long game is to get Embiid, then why are you helping out? That's where I was going to end up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the other part of this. That's the, <laughs> that's the beginning gonna, and the end of the conversation. They but, may um, make a Sixers trade. It's just not going to be. It's not going to be for James Harden. <laughs> I'm just, you know, but again, the fact that the fact that we even have to think about. Is there, you know, could the Knicks make. And again, a lot of people would look at that not as a low ball offer a lot because a lot of people are very much higher on RJ Barrett than I am. But, you know, what what I think around the league would be viewed as as a not a low ball offer, but like you know, not not what Daryl Morey would have hoped for. I have no idea what an offer for James Harden that is like good looks like at the moment. Cause the guy said I'm not gonna play like called his GM a liar, called they said he's never gonna play for him again. So like who wants to bring that into their situation? Especially if you're a team like no, the I, Knicks, I where every, like, it's nothing but good vibes in within the building, it feels like, oh, at it's the moment. fantastic vibes. They've got two guys dominating FIBA at the moment. Everybody's going to Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Hartenstein's wedding. Like, quickly has the the my trainers posting pics and my social media team. Quickly's going to get videos of, and poten- a good get newsletter paid, today. Yeah. Like, the, the next domino to fall is either an Emmanuel quickly extension, which we both think is going to happen, or yeah. the Knicks get creative and improve the roster in a different way using him. I think, I think they'll extend him. I, I, I think I, they will I, too. Yeah. I'm just saying like, th- like who wants to disrupt their situation with a guy that with has guy. proven to disrupt situations? Yeah. No, it's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Um, I don't think we need to say anything else about it. Um, yeah, let's. I'm just again prediction. What happens? See, we go back to. Thank you for giving me an extra five minutes to tell you. I have no idea. I have okay. no idea what like 
because he's held by the sorry for the expression parents with kids in the car the Sixers have him by his nuts like there's no he's stuck in Philly if he sits out the year the CBA says he's still know, in Philly um, he, he also with this like uh, video has acknowledged an intent to forfeit this season which is against CBA rules like if he just sat or just said oh I'm hurt you could technically like play BS and I don't know what the uh, Sixers I don't think would we do I don't think we get to that point. I point think, is, um, he's now said, this is my intention to never play for them. So it's yeah. all right. So I'll give you a hot take. I think someone else trades for him, not the Clippers. I don't know who it is. I don't think it's going to be next, but I think. Can I interest you in one Miami Heat? Oh, um, man. I, listen. If the Dame thing goes so south, could he, could he literally go south to South Beach? I, I mean, talk about the ultimate test of Heat culture. Yeah, maybe. But I think someone else trade for him. That's my that's my official prediction. 